Day two of free agency is fairly in the books, but as we know, as late as I'm recording this video, free agency never stops. We're going to talk about some of the more interesting moves around free agency. Are the Houston Rockets, what are they doing? Are the Los Angeles Lakers quietly winning free agency? We're going to get to all that and more right after this. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis, NBA Central. What's going on, basketball fans? Welcome to another episode of NBA Central. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow me right off the top at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform as I try to remember it. But let's get into it. It's been an interesting free agency from all the signings on day one to the number of deals that were given out to Brent, Fred Van Fleet's um, contract number and things like that, which we talked about on the recap of day one. But day two of free agency brought its own set of interest, right? And yes, we're going to talk about Dame Lillard requesting his trade. We actually have a live stream that we did right after it happened on the channel as well, if you want to hear our instant reactions to that. But let's get into the first topic for today. What the hell are the Houston Rockets doing? When you look at them already giving Fred Van Fleet uh, the money that they gave him, he's getting paid more than Kyrie Irving now, right? And then they follow that up by on day two of free agency, signing Dylan Brooks to a four-year, $80 million deal. Now, the thing with this is, is that we don't even know who else they were bidding against. While we heard some, some rumors on teams that could be interested in Dylan Brooks, the fact he gets four-year, $20 million, which is a, a, a average annual salary of $20 million per year, it seems, it seems, and listen, you're bringing him to a team that's still young, that you're still trying to build some culture down there, and maybe it's the wake-up call that they do need. Now, they do have a head coach down there that, you know, he, he's, he, while only being at one destination before then, and when you look at Ime Adoka, he's really trying to build that culture down there. He's going to have a lot of years to do it in, but adding Dylan Brooks to that team on top of the money they already gave, gave Fred Van Fleet was a little bit of a head-scratcher. And then you look at they also uh, they traded Kenyon Martin Jr. to the Los Angeles Clippers for two second round picks. He's been wanting his way out of there since the beginning of last season. That kind of makes sense in tracks, right? And then John Lockdale, they signed him for a four year, thirty two million dollar deal. Now, don't get me wrong, this guy was the backup to DeAndre Ayton. Uh, only played what two years so far in the NBA. A little bit of an older player, so I'm sure him and his agent wanted to get him paid. And while you know when you look at the the money nowadays, it's not huge by any stretch of the imagination that's an annual uh salary average of eight eight million dollars per it still brings its own set of questions right but the, the biggest question is what are the houston rockets doing right they're throwing money at a lot of players and you know you, you're bringing in dylan brooks now you have a lot of fords down there tari eason's down there um you still have alfred sangoon who's one of my one of my favorite of their players that they have down there you're still trying to figure it out right and you just worry with uh, the Fred Van Vliet signing kind of made sense to me. You want a veteran point guard to help kind of lead that team. I would not be surprised if more deals are coming down the stretch for the Houston Rockets as they, as they look to maybe break up some of the monotony on that roster. But at least that's kind of the question that I have there is what, 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 what are the Rockets doing, right? When you go off that, uh, with them with the Clippers, the Clippers are also giving Russell Westbrook a two-year, $8 million deal with a player option on the, on the second year, and that's something that we're seeing a lot in this free agency period is a lot of two-year deals with, the, with the, the player having an option in the second year, which basically makes it a one-year deal that the player can opt out of and get back to free agency if they have a big season. Now, Russ, you know, he, he had really a resurgence with the Los Angeles Clippers. How he played with the Clippers versus the Lakers is kind of night and day. Makes sense there. You know, they were trying to, the Clippers were trying to see if they could explore, get a different point guard down there. Didn't happen. They bring back Russ. I like this for this for that team. Hopefully they can stay healthy. I like where the Clippers are headed overall. This deal kind of made sense for them. The next one, are the Lakers quietly winning free agents? When you look at what the Lakers have already been able to add to their team in a time period where a lot of people thought that the Lakers just weren't going to have the assets to really add much to that team. You know, maybe keep a lot of their own free agents, things like that. But they've gone out and really done well, adding Gabe Vincent already to the team, right? Adding Lonnie Walker Jr. to the team, uh, adding Torian Prince to the team, signing Jackson Hayes on a two-year deal with, I think, again, another player option down there as well. Resigning Rui Hachimura, right? Doing those type of things all makes sense for the, for the Lakers. They've been very, very active 
and making smart deals in that activity as well. And then you look at what they did on day two. Resigning Austin Reeves, a four-year, $56 million deal, a max-level deal for what he could get. I think a lot, of, a lot of people expected that. They had to pay him. You did not want to let him get away like you like let Alex Caruso get away, at least not in my opinion. 25-year-old player, has not been in the NBA too long, but in the two years he's shown you, you want to bet on Austin Reeves. And so I like that deal as well for the Lakers. You look at also re-signing D'Angelo Russell on two years, $37 million again with a player option in that second year. He can opt out, hit free agency again next season if he wants to. Solid deal for that. And then getting Jackson Hayes on another on another two-year deal. The Los Angeles Lakers, and, I, and it's so surprising, they won the trade deadline, right? Especially when you look at just how much it changed for that team and how that depth that they added really helped them go on that playoff run you know, to the Western Conference Finals when nobody expected that coming into the season, right? They were able to do that. And then you quietly add a lot of talent and keep some of your own talent as well. In free agency, they still have Jared Vanderbilt down there who's probably going to be their starting four. You add that to Anthony Davis. I like I like a lot what the Los Angeles Lakers are doing. They added Cam Reddish as well, who, you know, still a lot of question marks around him. Not a for sure thing by any stretch of the imagination. You know, you could get some upside out of that. So, like what the Lakers are doing in free agency as well. The Knicks also get active. They already, you know, re-signed Josh Hart. They now had him and Jalen Brunson's former teammate in college and Dante DiVincenzo. It gets down there. Four-year, $50 million deal. I think that's really fair for what you look at, what he can bring as a shooter, how he can help that team as well. A player that can put the ball on the floor, get past some, has been used to playing in a system where he's not going to necessarily get a lot of touches. and if they eventually do move on from R.J. Barrett in a deal for any of these stars that's available in the James Harden or anything like that, they, they've built out a pretty solid roster, I do think, that's going to be able to give them a lot. So, overall, team's doing pretty good on day two. LaMelo Ball resigns with the, or gets an extension with the Charlotte Hornets for five years, $260 million. Uh, you know, that adds to Desmond Bain getting the extension down there as well. Um, hey, deals are getting done. And, you know, LaMelo Ball, the Charlotte Hornets, Michael Jordan selling the team. They're going to, they, you know, holding on to their own talent. Uh, you know, they drafted Brandon Miller down there instead of going Scoot Henderson, which I think also makes sense to that team. Um, and they, they, they now have him locked in. They have a young stud down there as well. Is Miles Bridges returning? Is P.J. Washington returning, right? All those questions are still remain for them, but they lock in their main guy as they move forward through free agency. So all those signings, you know, as well, solid signings. We think they all make sense. Um, and it is what it is there. But the day was really headlined by Dame Lillard officially requesting a trade from the well, the Portland Trailblazers. Yes, it's a little bit late, according to what we already, a lot of fans around the NBA have been saying Dame should have asked for this years ago. But he's now requ officially requested that trade. Um, it seems like the Miami Heat are his preferred destination. We got something on the end of today saying that, you know, the Trailblazers, while they want to respect that, they are really looking at what's going to get them the best. When you look at Scoot Henderson also saying he would love to play next to Dame, but he's ready to take over as the face of the Trailblazers. They've announced that they do still plan on keeping their commitment to um, Jeremy Grant with the deal that they offered him. So, you know, the, the, the Portland Trailblazers get to move into the next phase of their franchise with some talented young players down there in Scoot Henderson. Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp's still down there as well. They, they, they have a nice, talented set of players that, to move forward in that rebuild. The biggest question now is, what is the package that they're going to get back for trading Dame Lillard? The Miami Heat can offer what they can offer, right? Can't really do too much. Um, the, the rumor deal is that, you know, it'll be built around Tyler Hero and uh, Kyle Lowry, uh, Jamie Jasquez as well. He's uh, tradable uh, 30 days unless he hasn't signed his deal yet. A 2026 uh, first-round pick swap, a 2027 first-round pick, and pick swaps in both 2028 and 2029. That's a solid package, I think, for uh, Dame Lillard, uh, considering all things. The Miami Heat don't have a lot of assets. They get off some salaries there. They get another nice young player in Tyler Hero as well. And then the Miami Heat would potentially get a player that they can pair with um, Jimmy Butler that's just going to play with a much-needed heart to add that to Bam Adebayo as well. A team that doesn't make as much sense for me is the Brooklyn Nets. I really look at that Brooklyn Nets team, and I say 
Are you really that far off from what the Portland Trailblazers? If if Dame goes there, the rumored deal there is Ben Simmons, Cam Thomas, uh, Sharp, uh, Dayron Sharp down there, a 2027 first round pick from Philly, a 2008 first round pick from Phoenix, and a 2009 first round pick from Dallas. So listen, that is a nice. It's not pick swaps is either. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers get get those picks outright. That may be the best deal for them. I mean, they get Ben Simmons who. You know, if you think you can get Ben Simmons back to actually caring about basketball, that would be a different thing. And then you have the New York Knicks as well, who can trade R.J. Barrett, maybe even quickly Fournier, um, and they have a bevy of picks from Detroit um, and their own 2025 and 2027 first-round picks they can include in that deal as well. Dame Lillard being in Madison Square Garden, you can do a lot worse than that, a lot worse than that. So, you know, we're going to continue to watch, monitor, see what it is. The Utah Jazz were mentioned as a team, too. Who wants to go to Utah? But, you know, overall, an exciting day two of NBA free agency. We'll see how it continues to shake out. But that's it for another episode of NBA Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. You can also send us any uh, voicemails and text messages, 773-270-2799. And that's it for me for today. I'll see you guys the next time I feel like making a video. Probably tomorrow. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.